What's good everyone, it's Steve from Sneaker Tech Talk, back with another video. For today's video, we will be taking a look at the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. So just before getting into this shoe here, I did wanna mention that this shoe has already released in Canada and over in Europe. So I did pick these up over on Nike.ca here in Canada. They did retail for $235. They will be releasing shortly in the US, and I believe the retail price over there will be $180. So as far as the traction goes on the Nike Zoom GT Jump, this is just a quick overview of what you're gonna be getting on this shoe. So you do have this multi-directional solid uh, rubber outsole. It is kind of a herringbone traction pattern here at the toe, and it continues throughout with a bunch of extra multi-directional kind of patterns throughout and then another herringbone portion at the bottom. So as far as indoors go at my house on my hardwood, this does seem to be gripping the hardwood very well. Uh, not a ton of feedback as far as squeaks go, but it is seem to be very, it does seem to be very tacky, sorry. As far as outside goes, I would say that these seem like they're gonna be pretty good outdoors because the rubber compound is a little bit more on the firm side and the channels for the outsole here where all the grooves are, it is pretty deep. So I do think you're gonna be able to take these outdoors, but time will tell how they perform indoors and outdoors. So this is what you're getting as far as the traction pattern on the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. So as far as the cushioning goes on the GT Jump 2, um, it's a pretty far departure from what you get on the ones, except for one thing, and that comes in the full length Zoom strobe. So as you can see on the inside, I do have the uh, insole popped out so it does have that full length zoom strobe directly under the insole so that is back and then where it differs with this shoe here is instead of on the ones where they had that really large heel zoom airbag you are getting a very large portion of react foam in the heel so it's very chunky it's very soft very plush as far as when you're landing so you are getting that react in the heel and then in the forefoot, you are getting two zoom pods, kind of like I believe it's on the Nike LeBron 16s. You get one on either side on the lateral and medial side. And you can see them kind of poking through here on both sides. As far as the foam compound up front, this portion here running throughout on either side, that is just a standard Phylon. So it is a little bit more firm, but at the back, you're getting that very soft React foam cushioning at the back of the shoe. Um, I will mention with this cushion setup, you're really not gonna get a ton of court feel or any court feel at all. This shoe is meant for someone that really wants a ton, like I mean a ton of impact protection. And it does seem a little bit more soft in the back compared to the GT Jump ones. Um, and then also you do have this portion at the heel that has an engineered curve for energy absorption and support. So this guy right here, as you can see, it's kind of curved. So when this uh, React compresses, this plate kind of keeps this shoe stable. And you also have that here at the forefoot on the lateral and the medial side. So without those plates, I believe that this kind of cushioning setup would just really compress and be unstable and you'd be teetering side to side in my opinion. So this plate, it's kind of the jump frame running throughout. That jump frame is keeping this shoe stable and supportive. So honestly, trying these on, the cushioning setup just seems wild because you've got that full length zoom strobel, the React chunky portion in the back, the two zoom pods, and then the Phylon. So it's a pretty crazy cushioning setup. But again, if you like core feel, this shoe will not be for you because you're sitting pretty high up in the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. And in my opinion, this setup is more for a big guy or for someone that just really wants a max cushioning setup. There are some days where I'm playing on court and I do want a ton of cushion, just depending on how my knees are feeling. So I do think this is a shoe that I will keep in my rotation, but time will tell once I get these on court and do the full performance review of the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. And just really quickly, as far as the insole goes, you do have that similar insole to the Nike Zoom Kobe 6, the KD15 with kind of that styrofoam portion. Um, it is a lot more firm at the heel where it does take some time to break in and sculpt your foot. 
This blue portion up here is a lot soft, softer, sorry. You can feel the zoom directly under your forefoot, so it's pretty crazy and soft. As you can see here, it's very pliable, whereas this stuff at the back is a bit more firm. So it does also have that carved cutout at the bottom of the insole for kind of having that zoom airbag sitting directly under your foot. So this is what you're getting with the insole on the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. So really quickly, as far as the fit goes, it is a very snug one-to-one, -one, true to size fit in my opinion. Uh, this is a size 10 and a half, which I usually wear in most of my basketball shoes. And my toe is sitting basically right here at the end of the shoe. Um, I'm gonna see how they fit in my first couple wears. If they're a little bit too tight, I do think I will order a size 11 and probably stick with that. If you're a wide footer, as you can see this shoe, it does kind of curve in near the toe. If you're a wide footer, I would go up half a size right off the bat because I think this shoe in the forefoot is just gonna be too tight in my opinion. As far as the tongue, it is a half booty construction. So right about here, it is connected at the bottom portion and then the rest near the top, as you can see, it is disconnected. So this tongue won't go too far on you as far as when you're playing, moving around within the shoe. And also as far as the fit goes, I know some people had some problems at the back with their Achilles, with the GT Jump 1s, having some pain at the back. But these, these are more of a mid-cut shoe in my opinion, so it doesn't go up quite as high. Uh, so I had no issues as far as wearing these around the house, as far as any pain in the back of the shoe. But they're saying this upper is kind of like an exoskeletal upper. It's pretty thin and pliable in my opinion, so it conforms very nicely around your foot. As far as the materials go on this shoe, I'm gonna say it right off the bat, for $185 in the US, $235 in Canada, it's a pretty cheap setup. You're really just getting engineered mesh. It's a very lightweight, breathable material. It conforms nicely around your foot, but for that price point, I think it is a pretty cheap setup, but it does work nicely. Like I said, it does conform to your foot nicely. It hugs it very well all the way around this shoe, 360 degrees. And then you do also have this fuse rand here for toe offs for some extra durability if you do toe drag. And then you have some neoprene portions here at the back with this blue collar here. That's what the shoe is really tailoring itself for, is the cushioning and support for a player that needs it. The materials aren't anything special, but one thing I do like is they're pretty minimal and very breathable. So that's what you're getting in the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. So other than the cushion being kind of a maxed out setup, the support on the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2 is also kind of maxed out. So what you're getting here in the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2 is an internal heel counter. It's very rigid at the back of the shoe. It locks your heel in great. This is a mid-cut setup, again, on the ankle, so it doesn't sit too high. You are also getting that jump plate or jump frame. So it starts here at the back and it offers support for that React foam for not teetering too much on either side, as you can see here. And then it does continue to run throughout the bottom and then up on the lateral and medial side of those zoom airbags. And it does run in the middle also. So it's offering some crazy torsional rigidity in the midfoot, but still some pretty decent forefoot flex at the front. So that jump frame is really gonna keep your foot protected as far as the overall torsional rigidity here in the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. And then moving your way up from that, you do have this file on foam here and right here, kind of where your pinky toe would be, it does wrap up. So your foot is sitting just below this here. So on hard lateral cuts, your foot is sitting just below this file on kind of guardrail. And then these two eyelets right here, they do run down into the strobel board. So as you can see here, they do run down all the way down here. So if you crank your laces pretty tight here at the bottom, it's really gonna harness your foot in kind of like a seatbelt directly around your foot. So on those hard lateral cuts, it will not be going anywhere. And then this second last eyelet at the top on the inside, it does have a flywire strand right here. So that's helping uh, to draw your heel into the back of the shoe and keep it locked in place. So overall, this shoe is very supportive in my opinion, but it is a lightweight overall supportive package, which you don't get in a ton of shoes like a lot of the older LeBron shoes back in the day. A lot of them were very supportive, but they came at a cost with a ton of weight. That's where this shoe does shine, is it is lighter than the Nike Zoom GT Jump 1. So the GT Jump 2, 
does come in at, this is a US size 10 and a half, and this comes in at 16.35 ounces, whereas the Nike Zoom GT Jump 1 in a size 10 and a half comes in at 17.4, so just over an ounce lighter in the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. But that's gonna do it for today's video on the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think of the shoe and if you're planning on picking it up. React here in the heel of the Nike Zoom GT Jump 2, it does compress pretty crazy. Honestly, it feels like a marshmallow under your foot. So time will tell. I am getting these on court this week and into the weekend. So I should have a good 10 hours of playing time into these uh, with this week coming up here. So I will have a pretty good idea and I will get the performance review out as soon as possible. As always, if you guys can like, comment and subscribe, it does help the channel a ton. And check out my Instagram over at 23MJ88 as it is an extension of my YouTube channel with all my pickups, basketball footage and nostalgia as a whole. Thanks for watching today's video and until next time, peace. I'm in line with the stars, I'm in sync with the earth. Ten toes deep, flower child from the turf. I never switch sides, like even when I die, I'm a ride for the squad, let up ties in the hearse. I've been on a vibe kinda hard to describe.